from the base line for the periodic counts, and they are having more pressure on the first floor, and also they are living in the first floor. Yeah, we can go after the lecture for sure. Or we can leave it to this one. Okay, I think we're ready. We're almost ready to start. Hmm. Dear colleagues, dear students, ladies and gentlemen from Cyprus and abroad, Good evening. After a silence in the past three Mondays due to one religious and two national holidays in Cyprus, we are back tonight for the seventh hybrid lecture of the 61st public lecture series of the Archaeological Research Unit. Tonight, we are have the honor and great pleasure to welcome to the lecture hall of the Archaeological Research Unit an extremely active research team from Poland. Professor Monika Rekowska and the PhD candidate Anna Kordas from the Faculty of uh, Culture and Arts uh, of the University of Warsaw, and Dr. Alexandra Bozowska Jarobsnika and Dr. Simon uh, Popławski, sorry for my Polish pronunciation, from the Faculty of Architecture of uh, uh, the Wrocław University of uh, Science and Technology. We welcome also Emeritus Professor uh, Dimitrios Mikhailidis from our department, who is also involved in the Latifka project to be presented tonight. Let me briefly present our four speakers, starting uh, with uh, Monika Rekowska, Associate Professor at the Faculty of Culture and Arts at the University of Warsaw, where she has also written her PhD in archaeology and her habilitation in humanities. Her research and publications are focusing on Roman archaeology, particularly on spatial and decorative aspects of architecture as a result of her involvement in excavations and cooperation across Europe and North Africa. I mention only some of them, like Orbe in Switzerland, in cooperation with the University of Lausanne, Hausbürger in Germany, in cooperation with um, the, uh, the Universitat Köln, Akrai in Sicily, Apsaros in Georgia, and finally Aptolemais in Libya as a member of the Polish Archaeological Mission. Monica is since 2018 active in international projects in Cyprus, working at the Fabrica Hill in Neapaphos, a project directed by uh, Johanna uh, Muinarczyk and Claire Balladier, she has contributed to new insights in the sacred topography of Hellenistic and Roman Paphos. In 2019 to 23, she has col collaborated with Emeritus Professor Dimitris Mikhailidis, Patrizio Pensabene, and Eleonora Gasparini in a project titled Residence as a Self Presentation of Urban Elite. Architecture and Decoration of the House of Orpheus in Neapaphos, the Ancient Capital of Cyprus. 
A pivotal aspect of this project was the meticulous spatial 3D documentation of the layout of House of Orphois with impressive results. Her more recent activity encompasses the Latsithia project in the Episcopi region by Limassol, about which we are going to listen tonight. Professor Rekowska has authored three books and numerous articles. As the director of the Doctoral School of Humanities, she is engaged in the uh, supervision of hundreds of PhD candidates in humanities, one of which is, uh, uh, and I'm using her words, uh, the exceptionally talented uh, Anna Cordes, with whom she has the privilege to cooperate since 2017. Let's move to Anna. Anna Cordas, our uh, main tonight speaker, has completed the BA in archaeology and her MA thesis on Greek epigraphy at the University of Warsaw. She has gained her fieldwork experience at Nea Paphos, uh, Nove in Bulgaria, Rizal in Montenegro, Ptolemais in Libya, and Alexandria in Egypt, as well as in the French excavations at Driros on Crete. Her PhD, currently in progress, is dedicated to architectural features and more specifically to Mason's marks in Cyprus and the vicinity of Alexandria from the Hellenistic through the Roman era. Within this framework, she has conducted a detailed photogrammetric uh, documentation of unpublished architectural elements of the Amathus Agora and together with the architect uh, Shimon po Poavsky attempted to correlate these elements with particular stoas of the Agora and to propose 3D reconstructions of their decorations. This study aims to explore the distinct characteristics of marking, syst marking systems within these regions with the primary objective of determining whether stone masons' marks can be utilized to trace the workshops of stone ma masons for potentially confirming hypotheses regarding the mobility of stone masons between these two areas. Anna is currently involved in the much promising Latsithia project, while she has already published a few articles. I continue with a few um, uh, CV notes of uh, the next two members of the Latsithia uh, team, the architects of the Faculty of Architecture of uh, Vrolau University of Science uh, and Technology. Dr. Shimon Pop Popluaskin is an architect who has been trained in Alexandria, El Alamein, Vereniki, Koptos, and Tyre, Tyre, where he has learned a variety of documentation techniques such as photogrammetry, etc. Starting with his PhD thesis on ancient construction techniques from the El Alamein area, he has decided to devote his future research in the building culture of Greco-Roman Egypt and the architecture of the Eastern Mediterranean. He has already published some articles on architectural issues uh, on Veroniki and El Alamein and is a crucial member of uh, the Latifkia project. So far, no word about the Latifkia uh, project. We are have four speakers for this. I reached um, uh, uh, to uh, present uh, Dr. Alexandra uh, Zozovska, Yavornitska, who is remotely joining us tonight. She is a lecturer at the Faculty of Architecture, where she has also submitted her PhD titled Ports and Harbors of Pre-Ptolemaic Egypt. Her major interests include, beyond harbors, the residential architecture of the eastern provinces of the Roman Empire, ancient Cypriot and Egyptian architecture, especially ancient architectural decoration, and conservation and protection of monuments, on which she has widely published. Uh, Alexandra is a member of the Commission on Archaeology of uh, Mediterranean Countries of the Polish Academy of Arts and Sciences and a permanent associate of the Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology of the Warsaw University. Moreover, she is a member of the following archaeological expeditions and projects. Polish Archaeological Mission in Neapaphos, Polish Egyptian Archaeological and Conservation Mission 
to the temple of Queen Hatshepsut uh, in Deir el-Bahari, Egypt, Polish Egyptian Conservation Mission in Marina El Alamein, and Polish Egyptian Conservation and Archaeological Mission at Com El Dika, Alexandria. This year, she is acting as an associate of the Paphos Agora project of the Department of Classical Archaeology in the Institute of Archaeology in the Jagiellonian uh, uh, University. Finally, in 2022, she became the competition winner of the Miniatura 6 call organized by the National Science Center with the project title in search of the Hellenistic architecture in Nea Paphos, architectural studies of tomb eight from the tomb of the king's necropolis in a wider framework of the Hellenistic funeral architecture of the Eastern Mediterranean. The Latsitka team will uh, present uh, tonight some preliminary results of their work uh, in uh, progress in a lecture titled A, a New Greco-Roman te Temple in Cyprus a set of decorated stone details from the Latsitka site, reconstruction, potential, and research pros prospects. Uh, all uh, four teams are going to contribute uh, uh, tonight, one after the other. There will be uh, something like performance. Uh, I will ask uh, 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 Monica to come to the podium. Uh, she will be followed by Alexand by Anna, Alexandra, Shimon, etc. Enjoy this lecture. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. It is honor to be here. So we are really grateful to the Archaeological Research Unit and its director, Professor Bionis, and I think director, Professor Huka, for this opportunity to present our research. Thank you for the invitation. First of all, uh, my deepest gratitude goes to Dr. Georgios Ioriu, uh, the director of the Department of, Antiqui uh, of Antiquities for giving us the chance to work at Latsikia. We are also grateful to Dr. Elena Stiliano for all the support she has provided before and during our work. Needless to say, the assist assistance provided by the staff at Episcopi Museum, especially Dr. Evi Trasivolo is also much appreciated. We have just finished a survey at the locality Latsikia, documenting the site and collecting a large number of architectural fragments. But why we wanted to do this? To do this? Why? Uh, we was asking for the provision, permission to conduct some non-invasive survey. The starting point of our work was the research that Anna Cordas carried out on material previously collected at the same site by Dr. Eleni Prokopiu. And Anna Cordas will start the presentation uh, with her research, then followed by commentary of two mentioned, already mentioned architects. But I will be back. And at the end, I will share with you some preliminary observation on the site resulting from the work that finished yesterday. Anna? Anna? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in May 2022, during my doctoral research project on Greeks and Mason Marks, I encountered curious column bases at the Archaeological Museum in Episcopi, bearing stone Mason Marks and originating from the site um, that Professor Rekoska already mentioned. It turned out that on this site were found 
uh, other interesting stone elements, uh, among them block out capitals and big round ticus. Moreover, they have never been a subject of studies nor publication. Interestingly, the Latitia site is situated in the southwestern region of Cyprus within the Limassol district. Uh, in close proximity to the ancient city of Kurion. Of particular interest is its location, not far from the famous sanctuary and temple of Apollo Helates. Just below the Latitia site is an ancient Roman road connecting Paphos and Kurion. On the right, you can see a view from the Latitia location which offers perspective on the surrounding hills with the forest dedicated to Apollo Helates and the Roman road. In November 2022, I completed a photogrammetric documentation project and the first observation is that all the stone elements from the Latitia seem to be made of the same time of local limestone. Within a 38 uh, documented by me elements, we can discern several main categories. First, we have lower parts of the blockout capitals, uh, before known as Nabatean uh, capitals. All of them exhibit uniform sizes and share similar decorative features. There are three larger fragments and several smaller pieces that were subsequently matched to these three primary components, suggesting the preservation of at least three complete lower parts of the block of capitals. Then we have a three distinct types of corners of the upper parts of the block of capitals, varying in shape and size. The collection also comprises two attic, ba attic column bases, each bearing uh, mason marks. The bases are coherent in both size and decoration. There are also column shafts of identical dimensions. Crucially, all the column elements exhibit remarkable coherence. I mean that the diameter of the bases precisely align with the diameters of the shafts and diameters of the capitals. This finding is of paramount significance, as it indicates that we are not dealing with a haphazard collection of architectural elements. Next, we have uh, elements of the entablature. Among these two blocks and two smaller fragments of a cornice adorned with modillions. Among the elements, we encounter numerous fragments of another type of cornice featuring pedunculus. Within the entablature element, a fragment of an architrave with three fasci, characteristic of the Ionic order, has been identified. The presence of this element is of great significance for this set of architectural elements, taking into account that stone architraves were a feature of a temple buildings. Regrettably, no frieze block has been recognized within these elements. However, the most extraordinary find from the Lasitka site is a fragment of a frame of either a window or a niche. The preserved left side of the frame features a pilaster with a blockout capital. At its apex, the frame is adorned with a semicircular cornice. The entirety of this niche or a window was crowned likely with a triangular pointed pediment. The most remarkable aspect of this discovery is the replication of the decoration seen on the full size blockout capitals. Given that only the lower parts and the corners of the full size capitals survive. Importantly, as far as no 
similar niche or window with a pointed pediment has been confirmed in Cyprus. Therefore, this is an important find from the point of view of the architectural history of Cyprus. The only analogies we could propose originate from regions beyond Cyprus. Some similarities we can discern in examples in Thermesos, Baalbek, Palmyra, and Ptolemais. However, no one of them represent the same decoration, uh, decoration set. The most striking parallel to the frame is found in the window frames of the late building, the third or fourth century D West Gate in Gamzigut. Among elements from Latitia, worth noting is also an uninscribed typus, which is of consider considerable size of one meter high. This style of chippy has been discovered in diverse contexts, including funerary monuments, in domestic and even temple environments, as is seen in the photograph from Purion, where similar typus was situated in close proximity to the podium of the temple of Apollo Helates. This gives a convincing argument to see the typus from Latikia as an altar. Here I present photographic documentation of a survey works made in 1997 and two, uh, 2000 at the Latikia site directed by Dr. Eleni Prokopiu. As the photos reveal, all these elements were found on the surface of the site. It is noteworthy that there are no discernible traces of walls or foundation preserved on the surface, with natural rock formation predominantly covering the plateau. Importantly, within the rock formations of the Latitka site, Dr. Prokopio observed pre rock cut acrosolia and evidence of quarry activity. Hence, uh, one of the initial hypotheses proposed by Dr. Prokopi was that the Latika site was the quarry for extracting stone rather than the place where, where the building composed of these architectural elements were erected. Now I'm giving the floor to Dr. Uh, Alexander Brzozowska Jawonicka, who will tell more about the local capitals. Uh, thank you, Anna. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. yes we okay. Do. Okay. Thank you. Good. 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 Sorry. Good evening, everybody. Um, next slide, please. Uh, some of the elements discovered at the Latitka site were identified as the so-called blocked-out capitals. They were most probably designed in the area of Alexandria in Egypt and spread throughout the eastern Mediterranean. Apart from Egypt and Nabatea, they were particularly popular in the areas of today's Saudi Arabia, Syria, in Israel, and on Cyprus. They occurred in several uh, types and are characterized by a simpl simplified form of a Corinthian or Ionic capital lacking floral decoration, which is replaced with a plain shape. They were used in build they were used in buildings of various functions, such as public edifices, temples, tombs, as well as in private residential architecture. It is worth yeah. emphasizing that buildings in which these capitals were used are dated from the first century BC to the early third century AD. Next slide. Yes, this one. The blocked out capitals were also discovered on Cyprus, here exemplified by the facade of the Temple of Apollo Helates in Curion. And next slide. They were found in all of the important ancient Cypriot cities in buildings of various functions, but only three of them, till now, can be precisely dated. Uh, the already mentioned Temple of Apollo Helates in Curion, the Temple of Aphrodite in Amatus, and the so-called Hellenistic House in Neapathos, all erected uh, in the 1st or early 2nd century AD. Most of the Cypriot blocked out capitals are derivatives of the Corinthian order. Although they are similar to those from outside the island, their form and the degree of simplification differs considerably from the Egyptian or Nabatean examples. Next slide, yes. 
There were seven <laughs> fragments of the blocked out capitals among pieces of architectural decoration found in the Lacitka site. Three corners from the upper halves, three lower halves of capitals, and one fragment of a richly decorated niche or a window with a pilaster capital. All of them are the derivatives of the Corinthian order. It seems that they belong to at least four separate architectural structures. The lower halves of the uh, capitals con constitute the classical form of a Cypriot blocked out capital with two rings imitating the upper parts of the acanthus leaves, a plain calatos and an astragal of a complex profile. They are all characterized by the same scale, size and moldings, so most probably they originally belonged to one architectural ensemble composed of at least three freestanding columns. Uh, the lower parts from Lacitkia are similar to the blocked out capitals from many Cypriot archaeological sites, for example, the temples in Curion and Amatus, or from the Paphian house of Dionysus. Three corners, originally belonging to the capital's upper parts, were also found in Lacitkia. Unlike the lower halves, the three corners have diverse sizes, profiles, and forms, indicating clearly that originally they belonged to three different capitals from three independent structures. Apart from the di differences in their form, they are all characterized by a complex abacus, plain side surfaces, and a sloping face. One of the three corners, here marked in blue, presents a set of typical features of a straight corner that was originally a part of a capital crowning a freestanding support, most probably a column. It is a symmetrical element with a straight face and side surfaces of the same curvature and identical side decoration in a form of concave arches. There are many corners of that type, here exemplified by corners from the Paphian House of Dionysus. Uh, unlike the blue corner, the other two, marked in red, are clearly twisted. The twist of the corners indicates that the supports they had once belonged to did not constitute freestanding columns. The asymmetry of the corners resulted from the form of the support designed as a half column, a pilaster, or even a more complex type of an engaged support. In this case, we also have many analogies on Cyprus. Such a corner comes, for instance, from the Paphian Hellenistic house. One of the twisted corners, um, marked in red, uh, presents one more very interesting attribute. In contrast to the rest of the preserved uh, Cypriot corners of the blocked out capitals with side arches only suggesting the original form of a volute, this corner has well-defined disks on its side surfaces directly resembling the, say, the shape of, uh, of a scroll. It is a unique uh, element that has no direct analogy on Cyprus. There are a few examples with slightly rounded bottom surfaces, but none of them has a clearly marked shape of a volute. The capital from Parepaphos constitutes the closest Cypriot analogy with corners characterized by rounded bottom surfaces. It appears that the corner in question most closely resembles the capitals from Egypt. The analysis of the blocked out capitals from the Lacitka site proved that the straight corner marked in blue matches in scale and form the three preserved lower parts. It seems that the corner in question constitutes a fragment of an unpreserved upper part of a blocked out capital that originally crowned a column. The last blocked out capital from Lacitka belongs to a pilaster which supports a richly decorated entablature crowning a niche or a window. As it is a complete form with preserved upper and lower part, it is particularly important for enabling studies on the form and proportions of the entire capital. The capital seems to be designed in accordance with all typical features uh, and proportions of the Cypriot blocked out capitals, although its poor state of preservation makes it difficult to analyze the form. Thank you very much, Anna. The floor is yours. Thank you, Alexandra. Uh, the documentation from the Latitka site at our disposal leads to conclude that they form a coherent ensemble intended in all likelihood for a singular construction project. Central to this inquiry is the pivotal question of whether the Latitka site served 
solely as a locus for the extraction and processing of stone, or if it is concurrently housed the building where these architectural elements were employed. If we contemplate the na nature of this building as a temple, it is essential to realize that only few temples in Cyprus preserved their architectural decoration. As for example, the temple of Apollo Helates in Curion, the temple of Aphrodite in Amaphus, and the temple of Zeus in Salamis, as well as the temples in Sol. Keeping in mind the proximity uh, of the Latitka site and the temple of Apollo Helates, I want to dispel any doubts uh, that the presented architectural elements from the Latitka site serve as a quarry for the nearby temple of Apollo Helates in Curion. A notable distinction arises in the decoration and the scale of these two buildings. As it's seen in the table, with the comparison of particular dimensions, this without doubt shows that the Temple of Apollo was substantially larger. The important remark resulting from this comparison is that the architectural elements found on the Latitka site represent most probably an entirely new temple building. Now I'm giving uh, the floor to Shimon Popaski, who will present the preliminary reconstruction of this building. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the stone elements collected at the Latitia seem to form a coherent form, reinforcing the interpretation as originating from one building. They are of identical style, style and material. Consideration of the appearance of the building must therefore begin with a reconstruction of the architectural order. The lower diameter of the columns is about 53 centimeters, while the upper diameter is equal to 48 centimeters. On the basis of the proportions for the Corinthian order, as well as the narrowing of the column shafts, the full height can be reconstructed as about 5 meters, a multiple of the 19th lower column ready. The decoration thus reconstructed seems to fit roughly into the previous recommendations for the Corinthian order, except the capitals whose height should be equal to the lower diameter of the column, while it is apparently greater for our capitals. The case is different in the blockout Corinthian order in Cyprus. Looking at the proportions of the blockout capitals from the Temple of Apollo Pilates at Curion, or the protruding cornices from the Temple of Aphrodite at Amatus, the appearance of the order from Latikia fits well in the fashion of that times. What's more, it indicates a consistent form of the Cypriot simplified decoration, well evident in the form of the bases, arbitrates, cornices, or capitals discussed earlier. Observing the number of uncovered elements, we can certainly reconstruct three separate columns. This is clearly evidenced by three individual elements of the lower parts of the blockout capitals mentioned before. Uh, with the attestation of at least three separate columns, we can reject any reconstruction of our decoration as a composition with only two columns. Rejecting the three column arrangements for practical reasons, we can assume that in its simplest form, this building had a four column portico. While we can reconstruct the intercolumniation in the non passage space fairly accurately based on analogous examples from Cyprus or on the previous guidelines to equal between two and two and a half lower column diameters, the central intercolumniation remains a puzzle. Hence, at this stage, we will only use the view of a pair of columns. Starting the decoration of a fragment of the frame of a niche or window allows an almost certain reconstruction of the appearance of its whole form. The fragment is characterized by finely executed detail of a rather elaborate form, considering the size of the element and the simplified nature of the decoration, even of the biggest specimens. The shape 
of the anticorrelated surfaces of the block allows us to assume that it most likely forms part of a window frame rather than a niche. Moreover, the form of a passage can be rejected by observing the scale of the, of the element. Also, the interpretation of the element as part of a longer archaic is not confirmed by its shape. The form of the pediment finial could have been broken semicircular or triangular regarding the baroque the features of this antique Alexandrian architecture, but the latter, so the triangular, seems to be the most likely. At this stage, it was assumed that the proportions of the frame would match those reconstructed for the portico columns, forming a single niche topped by a triangular finial. We should finally consider whether the discussed framing was part of the same building as the column portico. If so, it must have taken the form of a single opening rather than an arcade. On the other hand, for functional reasons, we can rule out a window instead of a niche. The location of the niche on the temple's facade may be suggested by known parallels from Egypt, Syria, and Lebanon, especially since the resemblance of the latter, the secret temples, manifested in the form of high circles are well known. The lack of finds of niche frames in a domestic context in Cyprus should be noted in contrast to their popularity among the Roman cities of Egypt or Italy. Equipped with the present knowledge, we can be attracted to theoretical reconstructions of the facades of the probable temple from Latikia, based on the number of columns attested by us and the analogy with the temple of Apollo Pilates we can assume a cluster with four columns, or in other words, a tetra style, as the probable layout. Both the height of the soccer and the angle of the roof slopes can only be, be hypothetically suggested by now, and we've done it taking the temple of Apollo of Kurian as a model. Finally, the central intercolumnation is also, for the time being, only a suggestion of a wider passage. The temples we are reconstructing would be one of only few currently known Greek Roman temples in Cyprus, which preserved architectural decoration. All evidence suggests that originally it would not have been much smaller than the nearby temple of Apollo Pilates of Curion. This would make it all the more interesting to confirm its existence in the field and to search for a cross relation between the two shrines. Thank you. Thank you, Shmo. In summary, uh, the architectural elements found at the Latikia site form a remarkably stili stylistically coherent collection, suggesting that they could be a decoration of a building constructed in a single place. These elements reveal the monumental and public nature of the building, while also highlighting the undeniable influence of Alexandrian art on the decoration crafted in local Cypriot limestone. Of particular significance is the fragment of a niche or window, the already mentioned, which, if it is part of the temple, as I say, decoration will add considerably to our knowledge of Cypriot temple architecture. A temple. During and at the very at the same time very tempting uh, proposal, but to check if this hypothesis is valid, further research is needed, of course. So thanks to the kindness and goodwill of uh, already mentioned the director of the Department of Antiquities, Dr. Yogios uh, we uh, obtained a permission to conduct a non-invasive research at Latsikia. And thanks to the generosity of University of Warsaw, we carried out last week during five days. The research would not be possible 
without a great team. My special thanks goes to Professor Dimitris Michalidis, our good spirit and research supervisor. But as you can see, uh, the team, uh, the, the work involves more people. Uh, Maxim Matskiewicz from the left, yes, from the left, Maxim Matskiewicz, uh, who made a geophysical prospect. Uh, prospection, uh, then Professor Michael Dess, uh, then I was also mm -hmm. acting as a director of the team, and finally Dr. Szymon Popaski and uh, Anna Kordas, the PhD candidate. Now uh, I would like Mm, to present some very pre preliminary remarks resulting from our work, which included surface investigation, measurements with use of ground penetrating, penetrating radar, remote sensing documentation, as well as photo documentation of the site and architectural elements. An area of 24 hectares was documented with the use of drone. In total, over 800 photos were taken that allowed the creation of an orthophoto plan of the entire surveyed area. The planned research with use uh, GPR could be carried out only on a flattened area on the top of the hill the rest of the site due to the shallow bedrock, the large number of loose stones and dense vegetation at this time of year was impossible to examine. The field investigation did not lead to, to the identification of any buildings remains in situ However, according to Dr. Uh, uh, Eleni Procopio, this area was um, a place of uh, intense agricultural uh, activity. However, it led to the location of numerous loose broken blocks and column shafts or drafts, and to the registering of 60 blocks with architectural decoration all scattered over a relatively small area on the southern slope of the hill. Among the decorated uh, architectural elements were blocked out capitals, cornices of different types, one architrave fragments, architrave with three fascia, and several blocks with moldings, all only um, partially preserved. They were all recorded, and now the photogrammetry of each block, which was made by Szymon Popławski, will allow for the future making of a 3D documentation and three uh, of 2D documentation and 3D models. The result of this preliminary study are very promising. All elements recorded are coherent with the items collected by Dr. Eleni Prokopio, while the site is littered with broken dress blocks. All these elements raise questions as to the nature of the buildings at Latsikia, questions that can be clarified with further investigation. The site is even more interesting, given the presence of three arcosolia, which broke uh, one broken, as well as possibly post-dated quarry activity. Hopefully, to be continued. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank mm -hmm. you.
we have to thank you very much for uh, 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 such a detailed uh, uh, presentation of this uh, new project, which has uh, resulted uh, so much thanks to uh, your sharp knowledge, uh, your good knowledge and uh, the sharp eyes, uh, I would uh, say. Uh, um, even me as a prehistorian, I was very impressed by the, this uh, uh, new uh, project. Uh, what we always say is that uh, uh, someone has to do the beginning. In that case, uh, Eleni Prokopiou from the Department of Antiquities uh, has uh, uh, done the uh, start and uh, the younger generation, uh, speaking of uh, uh, Anna and uh, Shimon, uh, under uh, uh, the guidance uh, uh, of uh, uh, Monica and of uh, Alexander and of Dimitris, went uh, uh, very far ahead. Um, uh, I suppose that uh, uh, there, <clears throat> there are questions from uh, the audience here and also uh, 